Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with a very exciting video. Games Workshop very kindly sent me out the new Astra Militarum Army box set. Um, and as Astra Militarum and Imperial Guard are my absolute favorite army out of any game system anybody has ever done, I am so excited to bring you an entire series of Imperial Guard. So I'm gonna get started with the uh, up-to-date, beautiful new Sentinel. So that's what we're gonna do here today. So stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, this is the new Sentinel in the flesh or armor as it would be. When I first saw the pictures of this thing, um, it seemed like it was going to be a lot bigger than um, the older Sentinel. It's really not. It's actually about the same size, just a little bit beefier. So I got it built up. I decided to uh, build the first one with a plasma cannon um, and a searchlight. And then I gave it a coat of chaos black all over. For the armor panels and stuff on my Cadians, I'm going to be going with a stippling technique that I used for most of my heresy vehicles. I also built a custom base for it um, to suit the kind of trench warfare that my Krieg fight in. Because with the new rules and um, that, you know, all the different guard regiments fight together, I'm going to base them all the same so they all match in as one large force. So I'm going to start off with the large uh, Artist Opus brush. Unfortunately, I did forget to hold up the pot of paint, which is very bad of me. So that's Castellian green that I'm using now. And I'm going with the stippling technique all over the armor panels on this particular piece. There are uh, mostly uh, armor panels around the face and head. That whole piece is pretty much green, but not as much of the legs are green as you might think. There's only a couple of armor panels and the actual feet themselves are mostly green. I had to go back to an old Warmer Community article um, to discover um, which parts of it were which. Um, the, the casing on the gun uh, that they had in their suggestion was black, but I definitely think that the, uh, the main armored part of the gun should match in with the armor color. So I gave that to Castellan Green as well. From there we moved up to Wild Flesh and we gave it a lighter uh, stippling effect. For anyone wondering about this stippling technique, it's basically to give the idea that it's kind of like a rough and ready armored paint scheme. If that, It's not a beautifully reverent piece of machinery, it's not a relic, it is literally a war-torn piece of equipment. After every campaign, you know, the pilot may slap on a fresh coat of paint. He doesn't go into a powder coating room and, you know, strip it off on a sandblaster and repaint it and like, it's it's kind of like rough and ready. It's a it's a it's a piece of machinery, um, so I don't like the paint schemes to be really really smooth. So I much prefer this kind of stipple technique, which would give this really nice like mottled armor look, um, and it looks fantastic. Lauren Forest was the last one done. This is much lighter, and as you can see, I also scrape it along all of the sharp edges just to give it a slight dry brush and a bit of an edge highlight kind of look to it. And with that bit done, apart from weathering, which we will do at the very end of the video, uh, we are going to uh, leave the green armor at this. It's time to do all the other bits and pieces that go around the green armor. But I will show you now in a second uh, a little bit of a close-up on how the armor looks when it's kind of completed with this very quick, very simple, uh, very easy to achieve uh, three stages of green armor to get what I think is quite a nice Cadian scheme. Uh, I will be doing this scheme uh, on all of the vehicles that I get. Of course, the new Rogaldorn tank and stuff will be a true testament to this scheme. But as you can see, it's a really nice coat of green, but it's not just a flat color. There's a bit of depth to it. Okay, time to uh, repair all the stuff that I wasn't supposed to hit with the green. So we're gonna go back to Abaddon Black and we're just gonna paint back in all the legs and all those bits and pieces that we hit with the green that we weren't supposed to. The legs on these machines are a majority black. So blacking them in uh, definitely helps. And it's a couple of other bits and pieces around it. The, the mounts for the searchlight and the weapon I did black. The counterweight, which is a new addition to the aesthetic of Sentinels, is if you look coming out of his butt, is a giant counterweight, which obviously stops him from falling over on rough terrain. I thought that was a very clever idea. Add a bit of engineering into uh, the new Sentinel. So uh, like I said, go around all the different bits and pieces that I want to be black. I use the uh, reference picture. Um, if you want to do that, do that. If you want to change anything, change it. It's up to you. Iron Hand Steel was then used for all the metallic bits, which once again is mostly around the legs. And there's lots of pistons, um, all the gears, all the like the circle bits at every joint, which they didn't really have black or silver, but I decided I think it would fit in quite nice to do it that way. So I did them. The exhaust pipes, not the coverings of the exhaust pipes, the coverings are actually black still. So you got to be careful painting behind those. And then some bits and pieces on the weapons, bits on the toes, and bits on whatever that little periscope thing is on the top. I presume it's periscope, I'm not really sure. And then the uh, casing that goes around the vent on top as well is also silver. So this is one of those things which takes a little bit of time because you have to just constantly look like, where's Wally? Are you supposed to be silver? Are you supposed to be silver? 
but once you have it all done you've pretty much blocked in all the major colors on this piece and uh, there's, there's no more guesswork it gets easier from here so it's time to null oil um, all of the black and silver parts add a bit of depth to them I'm gonna leave the green as it is like I said I'm quite happy with how the green looks everywhere else is gonna get a coat of the new uh, 18 mil pot known oil the thinner consistency one very quick step but uh, it definitely has a little bit of shadow and doesn't leave the black or the silver to be quite so flat give us something to work up to with our share layer as well next we move over to Corvus black and I layered up all of the black parts uh, on the miniature said it a million videos before but in case you're new here uh, Corvus black is what I tend to use to layer up black I don't like the flat black look of anything I like the one with a bit of touch of grey to it brings a bit of life to the part or component or cloak or whatever you're doing it's a very quick step because the two colors are so close you don't have to be particularly neat or make sure you get it in all of the black areas it will just sit quite nicely on the piece painting this guy up I really cannot wait to get my hands on another two of these get a proper squadron going Iron Hand Steel was brought in to highlight all of the metallic parts very quick once again highlight just around the edges leaving all those deep recesses with no oil I'd say it takes less than a minute of painting time to uh, layer up all the metallic parts on this thing get in there with the exhaust next I went over to the plasma obviously we're not doing a plasma variant this isn't um, very useful for you but it's nice to learn a bit of plasma work so I'm just dry brushing pure white and um, over the coils and as you can see I'm taking my time and going a little bit overboard catching a little bit of the green a little bit of the black a little bit of silver basically the zenith around the coils so that when I go in with the contrast blue later on to give it the glow effect I can kind of bleed that in and give it the actual glow there it is a bit of up close I also used the white while I was on my palette to basically in all the lights so there's a little light under the um, viewing slit and the searchlight obviously has the big bulb or the big glass cover part and then there's a little dot light beside it which is going to be a different color so all those were done using the uh, white it's a very quick uh, effective way of doing all of the kind of glowing lights and stuff just hitting them with a white or a silver and going in with the contrast my new favorite one for like lights that are turned off is iron jaws yellow and you just give this a quick coat over all those white parts as you can see it definitely gives that really nice kind of torch light look we did blood angels red contrast for all the other lights so the one underneath the uh, vision slit and the one next to the searchlight whether these are actually like laser pointers or whatever they are sensors they're probably not lights to be honest but they seem to be glowing in all the stuff I've looked at so far Talazar blue was the plasma coil color of choice and as you can see I put quite a heavy coat of this on the actual coils themselves and then when my brush is basically nearly out of contrast that's when I go around the outside and scrape my brush just to get the the blue on the glowing bits around the outsides Iron Hand Steel was then brought in to paint the grill over the top of the searchlight. If you were doing this as like one that was actually on, you might want to do the same technique as a plasma coil, dry brush a bit of white around the edges, and then maybe when you put it on the side of the Sentinel, maybe dry brush a bit of the white over the side of that too, make it look like it's glowing. It was now time to dress the miniature up, so I got out the new Cadian transfer sheet, picked out a few nice transfers, and applied them all over. I then used a bit of sponge to do a bit of black and silver weathering. This is a stage that you can choose to do or not choose to do. It's totally up to you. And then I added it to my completed uh, base. And I must say I'm quite pleased with the final result of this thing. I just think guards suit these bases down to the ground. And as a model that's like mostly green, it's nice to add a totally other color on it. it really helps break it all up. And obviously the weathering and the transfers do that as well. 
Here's a very quick 360 and final look at the finished Sentinel in all its glory. Cannot wait to bring the rest of the videos from this box set to you, the infantry command squad and those beautiful new big heavy guns, which will be coming in the following weeks. Okay guys, and there we have it, the beautiful new Sentinel, all ready, painted up, chipped up, weathered up, sitting on a cool scenic base to make a match in with the rest of my Astro Militarum and ready to serve the God Emperor of Mankind. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. If you have any questions about anything I did, put it in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. If you like what I do and you want to support me, there's two main ways you can do that. One, hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. That would mean the world to me. And if you want to help me grow this channel even bigger and crazier, then the best way to do that is, of course, my Patreon campaign below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.